Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night. Hope everyone uh, had a good Monday out there. Start of the work week. Uh, it is about 9.21 p.m. That's California time here. October 6, 2025 is the date. Take a look here at the Earthquake 3D globe. Let's check this out, see what we got for the latest movement. Shows a 2.1 up there in the cro uh, across the Alaska area. As uh, far as any major adjustment going on today, I'd say it was quite active all across the western Pacific here. Uh, even down there across the uh, Baja California region southward, uh, there was a uh, 4.3. It looks like they've uh, well, they further downgraded that quake. That one's striking this morning. Originally coming in as a, uh, I think it was a 4.3 and then uh, downgrade to a 3.9. So take a look here at the uh, southern California area. Number of earthquakes out there in the last hour mainly around the southern end here of the Elsinore Fault, showing some movement. Of course, that's an area uh, that's got some potential for some large earthquake activity itself and quite dangerous as it does extend up into the heart of Los Angeles area. Pretty good cluster of movement going on here today. As uh, far as anything above 2.5 across the west coast, um, let's see, there was a 2.7 here. That uh, this afternoon, it looks like. Outside of the uh, Santa Clarita area, kind of up towards the mountains. Maybe on this little fault system here, the San Gabriel Fault Zone. A portion of it anyway. Uh, and it does look like there was some more activity up north here in the San Joaquin Valley, 2.5. Uh, there's that 2.6 uh, there in the Hayfork, Hayfork area from last night. Speaking of that, I want to see if uh, we got any Cascadia trimmer events going on here. With that newer movement underneath Northern California. Nope, nothing. 517 epicenters of slow slip events up there across the uh, Vancouver Island ranges there, the southern end. Uh, nothing underneath Northern California. It's been that way for the last week or so. Just consistent, pretty solid amount of uh, tremor counts. Again, mainly up there across the um, area of Washington. It lo definitely looks like it has migrated here from Olympia area northward, and that does happen uh, on occasion there every time they stir up specifically in this area but uh, as always we do we do need to watch the Cascadia uh, as far as earthquake activity goes across Washington a uh, handful of smaller quakes I guess we'll go ahead and double check the uh, volcanoes up here while we're on it let's see what we have here see if anything's showing up here on this Monday night this is at the Mount St. Helens dome area couple earthquakes there in the background noise it looks like um, see all these little small spikes those are still earthquakes because I know for a fact because occasionally they'll throw in a magnitude for one of these and they're pretty much somewhat all identical in terms of their little reading here uh, but it still looks like there's definitely some earthquake activity underneath the Mount St. Helens region uh, that volcano up there in, in uh, Washington Mount Rainier Earthquakes are disappearing off the map, but we're still we're still getting some earthquake activity. Let's see what we got here. See if there's anything that's changed here. A couple earthquakes, as you can see on the graph, um, this afternoon and morning time period, and late last night. Uh, I would say there's a handful of earthquakes out there. Nothing big, not like we had seen back in July, but you know these are these are still technically earthquakes. Even though they're super small, uh, I do want to double check this other station over here, see if anything else is showing up uh, across the area to the southwest of Mount Rainier. Uh, looks like a couple earthquakes there. Not for sure. This just looks like some amplitude adjustment going on for a little bit. Uh, I really don't see any earthquake activity showing up here. Most of the movement is to the northeast there on the opposite side of the... Uh, of that station I just showed you so nothing big um, there's a couple smaller quakes there across Mount St. Helens from this morning uh, let's see what else we got here Bay Area one earthquake on the San Andreas Fault it looks like near Pacifica that's kind of been an interesting area here recently I got a little swarm going on there uh, I think it goes back here the last couple weeks got about 27 earthquakes or so in this area just uh, a little swarm nothing big but uh, you know, we are getting some adjustment going on there across the Bay Area. One off of the Hayward Fault this afternoon as well. A little 1.1. 1 
Uh, aside from that, uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye on things out here. There was a, a couple earthquakes here off of the Brawley Seismic Zone, a 1.2, and also further up north here from this morning. Um, looks like, you know, for now, a typical day down there across Southern California or evening, uh, but last 24 hours here, just minor activity, nothing big going on there for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park here. A couple earthquakes around the uh, West Yellowstone area. Let's go see what's going on there because they are listing those on the map. Uh, let's see, and we'll check this graph out right here. There's a couple of those smaller quakes there locally. They came in earlier this afternoon. Oh, uh, well, actually, these look like they were from this morning here. Six o'clock, eight o'clock or so. Um, those are going to be... That's interesting there. Uh, either they didn't show up or they're really small. Uh, you think that would show up though. Let me see. Let me check out a different uh, seismograph station here. I'll go back. Did not mean to do that. Uh, this one, I don't even know if this graph is working. That one's offline. We check this one. Let's see if the second one's working. I don't know, it's a little weird. Is this current data? I'm just surprised that it's not showing up there. A lot of these are offline. Well, maybe those are some of the quakes here, six, seven o'clock in the morning or so, it looks like. Um, 4.15 UTC time, is that correct here? Let's see. Yeah, that's correct. So those are, uh, looks like a uh, current. I don't see any uptick going on in terms of any major swarming. Just a couple smaller quakes here noted on the uh, USGS map from this morning. Uh, pretty good cluster of quakes down here south of San Antonio out there in the oil fields. Quite a few oil fields out here. And uh, looks like specifically this area is getting hit uh, fairly hard. Uh, I meant to go to the satellite view here. All these little checkered boxes out there. Uh, some holding tanks and oil pumping operations out there. Quite of uh, quite a bit of those out there in the oil fields. A lot of earthquakes right now. Nothing big, but uh, definitely a heavy duty amount. Uh, New Madrid seismic zone. A couple of smaller quakes there in the area from this morning. <clears throat> Aside from that, let's go ahead and take a look here across the Pacific. Got uh, some adjustment going on here around Tokyo. There was this uh, deep earthquake here. Not super deep, but about 30 miles deep here underneath the area into the Japan Trench. Shortly thereafter, uh, it looks like a little swarm going on there across the uh, Japan region. Some adjustment taking place here. Uh, mostly shallow or quake activity up there. Of course, that's right at the subduction zone interface. But in the mix of these shallow earthquakes, we got some deeper adjustment going on there. 30 miles deep there for 5.1. Uh, I don't think that we're going to see anything large out here in terms of mega quake activity because the 9.1 back there in two, two, 2011, excuse me, uh, was you know a sufficient uh, release of the strain out here. 2011 so that, just a short time ago there's no way this built up enough steam uh, for some further larger scale movement but we'll watch that it's definitely a little interesting sequence there uh, with a shallow adjustment at the interface and then some deeper movement taking place so we'll keep an eye on that uh, some activity up along the curl cam chatka trench here as well this region uh, is fairly well strained here in terms of the last time we've seen a major event out here it's been a while this area up here, the northern end, well, we just had our 8.8 .8 back in July. So really not um, majorly, majorly concerned about it. Um, there's always a possibility that uh, it didn't fully relieve the strain up here. We still see uh, aftershock activity there in the four range. Occasional fives popping, it, popping up there as well. Uh, but pretty active out here. Some deeper movement quakes there into the Izu Trench. That's got to be applying further strain out there across that Nankai trough, the subduction zone there. Uh, I don't really see anything showing up there on the map for now. 4.8 Philippines region, pretty clustered going on there across the area uh, as far as earthquakes go, but that's a common occurrence on any day. 
Uh, New Zealand, some older movement there from this morning. Deep, super deep activity into the Tonga Trench. Watch in this area in between uh, this 4.9 and up to the Fiji Islands area. It's pretty quiet, but uh, with these deeper quakes, they tend to further stress this area. And that's lacking movement currently, so that should fill in. Uh, let's see what we got. Middle America Trench down there, just some threes and uh, looks like a couple fours mixed in there. Some activity up north here along the northern end of the Perchilli Trench. Uh, got a swarm of activity over there across Puerto Rico. Look at that. Quite a bit of uptick going on there. Uh, some down south here. There's a couple different zones here of interest. You got the Mariotos Trough. Uh, this is kind of lifting up here, raising up this area. And then you got a dive portion here, diving area of the Caribbean plate and the North American plate boundary here where there's a, another swarm going on there, it looks like. Twos and threes, there is a four in there. Um, but uh, nothing big going on there for now. There's always some concern that this area is capable, uh, that, that could produce a large earthquake out there along the Puerto Rico Trench. It's got uh, some dynamics here that uh, you would look for when it comes to big quake activity. Either way, keep an eye on that. It's pretty active, well above normal in terms of the uh, multitude of earthquakes out there right now. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on. As far as the Mediterranean goes, uh, still some activity stirring up out there. I don't see anything major for now. Definitely rock and rolling out here across this area of the plate boundary in the last couple of days. A crazy amount of uh, earthquake activity. We are way down there into the B flare category, B 5.8 to be exact. We're currently getting a uh, blackout there observed from the data. That happens every 24 hours uh, as the sun gets eclipsed there by, I believe it's the moon. Um, but yeah, we see that every 24 hours or so. It'll come back here in a short amount. Uh, this B flare category letting me know that things are. Um, starting to stabilize here this one's still offline uh, so look at these sunspots there they've weakened quite a bit uh, these would be out of sight out of mind across the western limb here soon and we're left with uh, not a whole lot out here a couple different weak sunspots here but really nothing of any major concern uh, the flare threat's probably going to drop like a rock here 40% chance there for an M flare, 10% for X flare. I think those are a little bit elevated now. Uh, a couple days ago when those sunspots there were rocking and rolling, maybe so. Uh, but we're uh, we're starting to stabilize now. No major roars in the forecast. It does look like we have a slight chance there of some aurora activity though. Uh, maybe up to the G1 class storm. We'll see if that takes effect there. That looks like it's likely for tonight and tomorrow night. As uh, far as the uh, Storm Prediction Center goes, any uh, severe weather down the road? I don't really see it. Uh, for Tuesday, there's a little slight marginal risk here across New Mexico. Uh, looks like maybe for some hail, some large damaging hail, but that's about it. Uh, we've got some uh, tropical systems there off the tip of Baja, California. That's going to bring in some uh, moisture there for um, Southern California and also Arizona and the whole desert southwest are getting more rain than uh, California does, than my neck of the woods do up here in Northern Cal. Crazy. As uh, far as any tropical systems go, got to watch this area of rotation, uh, low pressure there off the east coast around the 13th of October. Uh, looks like that wants to spin up a little bit, but we'll check back on that as we get closer to that time period. Uh, in the meantime, folks, um, let's see here. Seismograph stations there, all quiet. I really don't see a, anything of any interest for now. One little earthquake on the Anza station down south in Southern California. But for the most part, uh, it looks pretty quiet out there. Don't want to jinx it, but always got to be prepared for sure. All right, folks, have yourself a good, a wonderful rest of the Monday evening. And we'll see you guys back out here for the Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday morning update. By the way, member drawing is coming up here in a little while. We'll do a member drawing on the 20th of this month. It's something we've been doing here for a number of years where we give away prizes uh, to our members uh, in a in a, um, a drawing, a live drawing. We pick out uh, winners. And, of course, we'll be doing two winners. We're still above 100 members, and 
I'll keep my word when I say uh, as long as we stay above 100, uh, then we'll uh, pick out two every time. So, yeah, jump on board and become a member today. Get extra videos, extra perks, extra emojis, all that good stuff. We'll see you guys out here in the morning. Stay safe out there.